This is Writing Excuses, Season 5, Episode 23, Life Day! <laughs> it's 15 minutes long because you're in a hurry. And it was a horrible, horrible thing. <laughs> it was an awful, an awful, awful thing. We are going to talk about holidays in fantasy and science fiction. So this is really a world-building cast. Yeah, this, this was a request we had from a listener to talk about uh, holidays in fantasy. When you're world-building a new culture, how do you do holidays without making, without falling into the life day from the Star Wars Hollywood special? You know, this okay. kind of Before ridiculous thing. Before we go any further, okay. yes, we're here at Writing Superstars. Yes, and we are. We've got Mary Robinette Kowal with us, a Campbell Award winner from 2008, and just all around awesome puppeteer and writer and whatever. And David Farland, David Wolverton, you go by both, uh, who taught Dan everything Dan knows about writing and has also mm -hmm. taught thousands and thousands of other people that same stuff. And of course, you've written what? 75 novels? No, only 50. Only 50. Yeah. And uh, Brandon, of course, is not with us today because he is on a panel in another room right Sucker. now. Sucker! We're on tape and you're not. We're talking about the Star Wars Hollywood special. <laughs> so, so, Mary. Yes. Holidays in science fiction and fantasy. Well, it's really about building a balanced mythos. How do you build a balanced mythos? And, and one of the things that I think you have to start with is actually uh, the environment of your world because most of the holidays are based on, uh, if, if you look across cultures, there's, there's always going to be a holiday right around harvest. There's yeah. always going to be a holiday right around the solstices. And so you start looking at what those are. Like I did a, um, I did a short story that was set on a ringed planet. And so there was a top day and bottom day, which was when the sun went into the ring and came out of the ring. And oh, those cool. were because because the weather changed. You know, it was a big, easy to, to spot milestone. So I think one of the things you should do is is look at your environment first. Yes, absolutely. Planting days too. Are the other Planting days, yes. Yeah. Not on there. But then we also have commemorative days mm -hmm. where you commemorate uh, something that happened in history or perhaps your own personal history. You know, in our in our culture we have birthdays, but you know, in many cultures. Children are not important, you know, until you've lived a while. So maybe yeah. your naming day, the day which you become an adult. Abraham Lincoln's uh, puberty day. That's right. <laughs> um, <laughs> there goes our clean room. It's yes. so <laughs> every year. <laughs> yes. Um, but then other good ones, uh, you know, uh, the day that you become a warrior, you know, your yeah. first kill, yeah. uh, whether it be human or otherwise. Blooding yeah. day. Blooding day. Right. Yes. day. Those are those are great days. Yeah. Uh, days that celebrate death. Um, are something that a lot of authors, I, I see a lot of fantasy authors who come in with lots of good, you know, birthdays and Christmases, but they have no Halloween where you actually, you know, go up and dig up your dead and, you know, talk to them for a little bit or something like that, you know. So those are fun days to go. Bone puppet day. Bone puppet yes. day. <laughs> actually, that's not bad. That's not bad. <laughs> I can actually can I do that. Well, I think we have a good writing problem. Oh, we've got a writing problem. Yes. Well, and then there's also the other type of commemorative day, which is days in history, like, you know, July 4th. Yes. Um, and, and that's actually a great way to add a lot of depth to the history of your world without actually having to to sit down and, and you know, do a lot of backstory for people. That's right. This is the day that King Arthur brought the sword out of the lake and be, you know, and it was crowded. You know, yeah. That's a, that's a great, lake ways, day. great ways to create a history. Yeah, watery tart day. <laughs> watery tart day. Watery tart. And then you throw swords at people. Exactly. So how do you keep then from, from, how do you make those holidays matter? How do you lend them the right weight for an audience that does not come from that culture? I mean, our obvious counterexample is Life Day from the Star Wars Hollywood special, which really felt hollow and silly. Yes. Um, how do you avoid from making your holidays hollow and silly? It's Holiday. space Christmas. Well, there is that aspect of it. Um, one thing that I find is uh, to have a wide range of character reactions to it. Just like, you know, with taking Christmas as an example. Um, I love it so much. My family, you know, we've got, we've got the talent show and people sing Christmas carols. My husband, not such a fan. So, so if you have someone who's sitting there saying, bah, humbug, you know, then they, they, they can't interact. That, uh, yes. that excitement that comes from, you know, her childish, silly glee. Yeah. 
Yeah. But it, it, because of that, it makes the culture seem richer. If you have everyone reacting to the holiday exactly the same, you're going to have a monodimensional culture, and, and yes. it's a monodimensional culture. Yeah, okay. the other thing that I think can help, um, and I'm drawing on uh, uh, American history, uh, 20th century, uh, July 4th, um, middle of the 20th century was often referred to as the bloody fourth because fireworks were an uncontrolled substance and people were in hospitals all the time on July 5th missing hands. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the, the fatalities, the injuries sustained celebrating that holiday were widespread. If you take a fantasy holiday or a science fictional holiday and part of the story is, well, it's now illegal for us to all get drunk and have a light flyer race, um, and, and then you do it anyway. And then yeah. you do it anyway. Yeah, yeah. suddenly it seems more real to us. Yeah. Now, I, uh, a great real world example of, of uh, crossing, you know, of having different reactions to a holiday. I used to live in Mexico, right on the northern border, where in Mexico, uh, the end of October is uh, all Hallows Eve, it's Dia de los Muertos, which is when yeah. you celebrate your ancestors. It's a very Catholic, very religious holiday. But they're right on the border of America where we have Halloween, which is an incredibly commercial monsters and blood kind of holiday. And the clash between those mm -hmm. made Halloween unbelievably interesting every year. Because, you know, you'd walk down a street and half the houses would be decorated with, you know, witches and ghouls, and the other half would have these very classic Mexican calaveras. And, uh, you know, if you'd go trick-or-treating to the wrong house, you'd get yelled at. And uh, it just very interesting reaction because of the way the cultures celebrated the same thing differently. You kids, put that body back in the ground! <laughs> yeah, well, and that that's actually um, brings up another thing, which is, you know, any time that you have a culture, there's going to be another outside culture as well. Yes. There will be minority cultures within any larger culture, particularly if you have something set in a large city. If it's in a small town, it's much more likely to be a, a monoculture. But not, in nature, yeah. Yeah, but not always. Um, but if you're in a big city, there are going to be other cultures coming in. And one of the things that you can also look at is how your holiday evolves over time. So there's the original holiday. Like, how did we get from child in manger to Christmas tree? Mm -hmm. yeah. you know? The other thing that you can do is, is think about your character's personal holidays. Yes. And by that I mean days of remembrance. You know, like my, my father died on January 2nd, so a couple of weeks ago on January 2nd. Um, you know, oh God, you know, it's 25 yeah. years, but it always reminds me. And so um, it, it's not necessarily a holiday, it's just a day of remembrance, something that comes up, and that's another way to give your characters a richer history. Yeah. Well, and on, the, on that note, my grandfather died on Thanksgiving several years ago, and so Thanksgiving has actually become almost more a memory of him, and we kind of eat his favorite foods rather than eating turkey, you know? Yeah. And I'm so, so glad that sentence ended the way <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Why don't we take a break now and talk about our break. book of the week, um, which we are going to have from you. Uh, that's Metropolis Cascadia. Metatropolis. Metatropolis. You didn't think I would do an answer to that. Um, that's why they didn't let you read it. That's, that's exactly <laughs> right. Um, this was an audible anthology, and it's, it is only available in audio, and we recorded it, or we created it for audible. Uh, it's got Jay Lake, Ken Scholes, Elizabeth Baer, Carl Schroeder, Tobias Bacall, and is narrated by an all-Star Trek cast. And, and you, you didn't mention yourself. Oh, yes, and I, I sorry, I wrote a story in there as well. The all-Star cast for this is ridiculous. It's like a best of Star Trek, yeah. essentially. Kate Mulgrew read my story. Will Wheaton is in there. I mean, it's, it's yeah, it's kind of exciting. Mm -hmm. And okay. they do a really good job. And you can get that uh, by going out to audiblepodcasts.com slash excuse. You've got the opportunity to kick off a 14-day free trial, uh, support the podcast, and obviously support the, the Star Trek folk <laughs> and the awesome <laughs> authors who uh, read and wrote Metatropolis Cascadia. I, I think we should also point out that uh, Metatropolis Cascadia is uh, eligible for a Hugo Ah, for form. best long form. Best long that form. is correct. Yeah. Thank you for plugging Dramatic that. presentation, is that the category? Dramatic presentation. Okay. Yes, yeah, the first anthology in the series won, or uh, not one. It was nominated, nominated for, for the Hugo. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And it was again best long form yeah. for Metropolis. 
Excellent. Back to holidays. We've got about five minutes left. Um, let's let's talk about some uh, about about all the ways we can do this wrong. Yes. There's okay. so many. Now, now, uh, one one thing that we like to talk about on the podcast is uh, taking something, you know, presenting something without explanation in your fantasy world can often make it seem richer. And uh, one of the things that I actually thought was kind of cool at the end of the Phantom Menace, you know, there weren't very many cool things, but they're celebrating in that culture, and you see them, they have their big parade, yay, we won, and they give this giant glowing ball to the, the whoever they were, the Gungans. And you have no idea what the giant glowing ball is, and I've seen so many, you know, things online making fun of it. I thought it was kind of cool it's because just a shopping bag with goldfish in it. Because <laughs> <laughs> it, it was—it's obviously something that that is significant in their culture. So I guess my question is, how much do you need to explain, and how much do you leave unexplained when you're dealing with these celebrations in another culture? So many times. Um... I feel, I feel like authors just go on and on and just kill it, you know. Um, they, you know, they explain what the glowing ball is and where it came from and its 400-year history and, you know, and this kind of thing. And, and sometimes it's just a pass-off. I think, though, that very often, um, you know, let's say you've got a, a hero who's tied to uh, the worship of uh, Moore's God, okay? And we have a significant day, you know, we're going to be celebrating that God's day, uh, Thor's day, um, you know, what does he do to honor his God, you know? Uh, we might want to get into that relationship, particularly if it pay, plays any, um, any role in the plotting. Yes. And, and so, uh, you know, but then there are other days that should just blow by you, you know? I mean, um, if I'm single and Halloween were coming past, you know, I probably wouldn't think twice about it in most cases. Um, and so, and but there can be a character. There can be a character development moment yes. where your character's like, "Oh crap! I was supposed to go to the grocery store and pick up some candy, That's and right. now the dang kids are going to come to my door and not get anything." Yeah. You know what? I'm just going to turn out the lights and wash the egg off in the morning. I don't care. Yeah. And so there are all different kinds of ways to handle it. I think that the, the, the thing you want to do is make sure that you handle it differently for each holiday or something. Mm -hmm. You just say, "Okay, this is going to blow by. This one's going to be really important." Okay, and. Um, and, and the thing to, to not do, actually, when you're creating a holiday, is to uh, to just take a holiday from our world, if yes. you're doing a secondary world, and mm -hmm. just file the serial numbers I, off. I've seen Christmas done so many different ways. Life day. <laughs> Life day, yeah. yes. I, I, you know, I don't want to have any elves coming down the chimneys and delivering you know, toys. And okay, well, well, then what do you do to make your holidays unique, to make sure that they don't feel like, you know, pre-existing... I think that it's fun. Well, this is the fun part of creating holidays, is to sit down and say, okay, we've got a day of planting. How are we going to celebrate that? And let's do it in a way that no one has ever done before. And come up with something cool, you know? Yeah. That, that's really all it comes down to. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, you know, what is, what things do I want to be important in this culture? You know, if, uh, if this is a culture where the planting season comes around twice a year, then first planting is going to have a di different significance than second planting. Mm -hmm. you know, and trying to, but, but you would also have the recognition that second planting is coming. If you've got an alien culture where the planting needs to be done, um, you, know, you need to plant things in the bodies of the dead in yes. order to get mm -hmm. certain things to happen, then you can mix planting day and bone puppet day. There you go. <laughs> And off you go. Now, I, I think it's also, you know, we talked earlier about how holidays can change drastically over time, and I think it can be fun to play with the really bad ones. You know, Guy Fawkes Day tried to blow something yes. up. Yes. We celebrate that today with fireworks, yeah. which is really kind of tasteless, but well, history and, has smoothed it out yeah. and made it okay. Now, we, we, we need to break, so we are going to have a writing prompt, and we are going to throw that at Dave. Yes. Close this out. And your writing prompt for today? is uh, to make up a holiday that nobody else has come up with before. Something you've never seen that's not based upon a holiday that uh, that you celebrate, I guess is the way to say it. Okay, that sounds good. And it can be Bone Puppet Day. And Bone Puppet Day is really If you're going to use Bone Puppet Day, mix it with something else. There has to be something interesting happening. Change, bone change the name, otherwise we're going to have Bone Puppets everywhere. All right. You're out of excuses, folks. Now go write. <laughs> <laughs>